If I turn this against his wrist, even if he's got two hands on it and I go hard and I start jerking and using my body strength, it's gonna be hard for him to put that gun back on target. <laughs> Instructor Z here with Carl, the man, tactical rifleman, another week. We're going to talk about active killer situations, in specific, knife versus gun. All right, what are the differences and what are some things that we can take into consideration? So, Carl, if anybody comes in anywhere that you're at and they're trying to kill somebody, what's your first thought? Protect my family. So we're surviving first. It's survive, all about survival. So surviving first, and you hear uh, DHS puts out uh, their point of view on run, hide, fight. And I agree with a lot of that, but you gotta know how to do that. And you gotta know the situation. Carl and I being tactical riflemen that we are, we're gonna survive, but we're also gonna look to save the rest of the innocents and protect everyone else when we get the chance. But we're gonna do it intelligently. We're not just gonna jump up and get gunned down ourselves. So. If I'm not the target of the shooter or stabber or the active killer, I'm gonna take that time to get behind cover, figure out what the hell's going on, process that information, and find figure out what my next step is. Would you agree, Carl? Yeah, I mean, if he comes into a restaurant and just starts spraying bullets, he's not there to assassinate Z. So if Z and his family are way over on the other side of the restaurant because he was smart where he chose his booth, he has time to react, he does use that time efficiently. Now, if the guy has a gun and he's right on top of me and it looks like he's aiming at me, in my mind, I have no choice but to fight right now or I'm just gonna die by getting shot in the back when I'm running, okay? So if he's anywhere in my vicinity and it looks like he has me in mind, I might even take a couple bullets, but I'm getting to this guy and I'm gonna get a hold of that gun. And an advantage of fighting a guy in close with a gun is that I can actually grab his weapon and turn that thing. And Carl will tell you, if I turn this against his wrist, even if he's got two hands on it and I go hard and I start jerking and using my body strength, it's gonna be hard for him to put that gun back on target and actually shoot me. And even if he gets it to this point, I'm gonna push it up away from me. And hopefully by that time, I can elbow him, headbutt him, make him think twice about wanting to fight me and somebody else is joining in hopefully and they hadn't ran off and left me alone to fight this guy. So for sure, I would much rather fight a guy with a gun in close proximity to me, about to kill me, than I would a guy with a with knife. A what knife. do you think, Carl? Definitely, knife, uh, try grabbing onto that puppy. He can grab that pistol, he can twist it. Try grabbing that sharp knife, even, even a good kitchen blade. Uh, grab onto the sharp end of that. All the martial art movies, the books, yeah, they've got all these techniques for disarming the, uh, yeah, pressure points, yeah, good luck. I, I've got a nice slice in the palm of my hand from thinking I could take the knife away from a drunk guy. Um, yeah, so make space. We gotta get control of this guy. If I do have to get in, in control of him, I need to do it and monitor where that knife is at all times while I'm getting control to get him down on the ground and make him want to release that knife. I can grab here and hit all I want. Uh, one thing that's very important, just like Carl mentioned, he tried that one time against a disadvantaged opponent and still got cut. Drunk as a skunk. I think most anybody out there will tell you, expect to get cut no matter if I have the upper hand or not if there's a knife involved. Even if I have a knife against his knife, we're getting cut. I don't want to be in this situation. I never want to be in close fighting a guy with a knife if I can help it. This is the point where I would make space and get my gun out if I had one. For you guys that don't carry guns, I don't know, teachers, anybody that this might apply to, if there's a guy with a knife and I can't fight him right away, realize that you don't have to run and be as scared as you do with a, a gun. Unless this guy's in the circus and he can throw knives at the spinning board with the lady on it, I don't have to worry about him hitting me with this thing when I have distance on my side or I have obstacles in between us. So that's the good thing about a knife. I have a chair here. If I take this chair and he's trying to attack my loved ones, I can at least redirect him and use this so I'm not gonna get cut. I can turn this into a weapon or use this to get a space to get to a better weapon, keep him at least away from my loved ones or direct him in a direction that I want him to go versus where he wants to go. So those are a few considerations when we're talking about knife versus gun. Listen guys, run, hide, fight, we're not telling you that you need to fight. I don't want you to put yourself in harm's way if you're not ready. But I think Carl agree with me. 
as a tactical rifleman, as a guy that, that does train, it's our duty to help those that are in need. So we learn life-saving techniques, we learn how to fight, we learn how to shoot, and as soon as I'm surviving, because I'm not gonna help anybody if I'm dead, I'm gonna survive and get my family safe, I'm gonna see how I can be an asset to that situation. What do you think? My wife knows, my family knows, uh, active shooters somewhere, they know I'm getting them to the nearest exit, getting them to safety, and they know I'm not going with them. All right? They know I'm going to go to the sound of gunfire. Your taxpayers' money spent a lot of money uh, teaching us to be like that. Uh, it's not for everybody. That's how we're wired. That's fine. But get them to safety first. All right? um, not just run, hide, fight, but uh, you gotta, don't forget the medical aspect of this also. So get the medical training. Post-incident, what are you going to do after? after the active shooter, the active knife attack has happened, it doesn't matter if it was somebody landing a Cessna plane in the food court, it's gonna be a while before those paramedics get there. So take the medical training to go in addition to this. But take this, take the considerations Z just shared with you, run, hide, fight, don't forget to barricade once you've hidden. But once you've barricaded and you're hidden, don't think, well, I'm not gonna to have to fight. Uh, it's easy to say you're gonna fight, have a little skill, take a little bit of training, and it's gonna give you a much better chance. All right, so those are our considerations for active killer gun versus knife. Again, not advising you to do anything that you don't know how to do or you're not comfortable with. So with that being said, don't just go by videos. Come train with us. Let us put you uh, to the test. Let us give you some skill. Let's see if you can apply some of this knowledge and be prepared for those situations because it's not only about having the tools and the skills, you gotta have the composure to apply those things in a chaotic time or when you're facing that active killer. Sign up for classes, tacticalrifeman.com. Uh, if we don't have one listed, uh, we'll put one together for you. All right, so subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, tune in every week, we got a video for you. See you next time. Masalama. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.